an ideal Sunday. My day begins with a refreshing morning walk, accompanied by Spotify's Discover Weekly playlist. It surprises me with a blend of new tracks that magically align with my preference for classical music and bluesy rhythms. Back at home, lunchtime approaches. My Instagram social media feed treats me to an array of adorable puppy videos, a delight for interlude in my day. Feeling energized, I embark on an artistic afternoon, seeking inspirations on Pinterest. The suggestions I find feel tailored for my creative taste. Like having a personal art mentor that understands my love for Monet's serene landscapes. A perfect Sunday ends with a movie night. Netflix steps in, recommending the movie Inception based on my repeated viewings of The Matrix. <laughs> Welcome to a day in the life of a modern human being, where algorithms. Wrote with our desires, composing each facet of our lives. In our rapidly evolving digital era, the fusion of artificial intelligence and human aesthetics has given birth to a remarkable endeavor: predicting artistic taste. By analyzing the vast expanse of data. From social media interactions, historical art trends to art reviews, AI has unlocked hidden patterns that allow us to predict individuals' unique artistic taste with remarkable accuracy. However, artistic taste prediction is not just about crunching numbers. It's our personality that is at the core. Of crafting individualized art recommendations, we all have experienced moments when a melody or a painting captivates us in ways we can't fully express. Previous research attempted to decode why we prefer certain artistic expressions, but these studies only focused on single art forms. Neglecting the potential connection across artistic domains. Can jazz lovers, for example, more likely to have a preference for abstract paintings? If there really is a cross-domain art preference tendency, can leveraging this knowledge? Enhance the ability of AI to understand and predict human art preferences more effectively. In a pioneering study by Palm and Griscom, this very question was studied. They discovered a potential connection linking our preference judgments across artistic domains. The most striking connection was found between color combinations and music. People who tend to prefer harmonious color combinations also tend to prefer harmonious music. They introduced an art personality factor, preference for harmony, which they defined as. How much a person likes or dislikes the music whose parts go well together, in the sense of being good gestalts. The term "good gestalts" is a concept from gestalt psychology. It's our brain's way of organizing sensory information into simple and structured patterns. They are easier for our brains to process and remember, which can stimulate our positive emotion. Such as preference. As a pianist and a painter, I am fascinated with topics surrounding art cognition and human aesthetics. Currently, I'm a fourth-year doctoral student in social psychology at the University at Albany, State University of New York, and I have the privilege of working as a research assistant. At Dr. Ronald Freeman's Music and Emotion Lab, 
We were interested in Palm and Griscom's preference for harmony idea, especially their definition of preference for harmony as a preference for good gestalt. As we delve deeper, we began to question if this feeling of processing ease was only due to structural good gestalt, or if it can also be related to the familiarity of the information. When we encounter something in the world around us, like a sound, an object, or an idea, our mind creates a mental version of it and stores it in our mind's library. For example, a sound we heard recently might be easier for us to process because they are more active in our mind's library. This raises an intriguing question. Could preference for harmony actually be a preference for more familiar things instead of just a preference for good gestalts? With this question in mind, we explored the role of familiarity using the set of musical chords. Chords are fundamental components of music, created by playing two or more notes simultaneously. They are ideal stimuli for music research due to their simple structure, making it easier for researchers to isolate certain musical features, such as harmoniousness and familiarity. To delve into the role of familiarity, we recently explored the relationship between preference for harmony and the mere exposure effect. The mere exposure effect describes how people tend to prefer things simply due to familiarity. Imagine you're scrolling through Spotify and you come across a sound you've never heard before. At first, it might not strike a chord with you, but you decide to give it a try because it keeps popping up on your recommended playlist. After hearing it several times, something interesting happens. You find the sound more and more enjoyable, the melody becomes familiar, and you might even catch yourself humming along. Eventually, it becomes one of your favorites, you seek it out and listen to it intentionally. That's the mere exposure effect in action. It's a simple but powerful effect, often working its magic without us even realizing it in real lives. For example, advertisers often strategically use repetition. You might notice that you see the same commercial multiple times within a single TV show or that you encounter the same advertisement across multiple websites. For our research, the mere exposure effect is a great tool to probe into how familiarity impacts individuals differently, especially how much each individual bases their preference judgments on familiarity. We induced the mere exposure effect by presenting three different sets of stimuli, Turkish words, Chinese characters, and abstract paintings. And we controlled how many times each stimulus was presented. Participants then rated their preference for the stimuli. Indeed, as we predicted, People who are more influenced by the mere exposure effect, in other words, those who tend to prefer familiar things, also tend to prefer harmonious chords. For example, people with higher preference for harmony may dislike an unfamiliar Turkish word at first, but over time, they may gradually develop a preference for the word presented nine times to them. These findings provided compelling evidence for our hypothesis that preference for harmony, at least in part, is associated with a preference for familiarity. It 
it's likely that preference for harmony emerges from either familiarity, structural good gestalt, or a combination of both, because these attributes are easier for our brains to process. Now, the question arises, what drives people to prefer things that are easier versus more difficult to process? There are a few possibilities. One is related to our cognitive abilities. People with higher cognitive ability might be really good at quickly grasping certain sounds or visuals, such as understanding a complex musical rhythm or noticing details in a busy painting. For them, what's commonly considered as harmonious or familiar might just seem too simple or even boring. This is an idea we plan to explore next, investigating if there's a potential connection between how quickly people process chords and their musical preference for harmony. Another possibility is that preference for harmony does not come straight from differences in processing ease. Instead, it's related to our metacognitive feeling of processing needs. What is metacognition? It's essentially thinking about thinking or being aware of how our mind works when making judgments. Some people might be more aware of and dependent on the feeling of processing needs when making preference judgments. While we'll need to conduct more research to be sure, Preference for harmony might actually involve being extra sensitive to the ease or difficulty of encoding stimuli. And this sensitivity might enhance our preference for things that are easier to process. So, where does this lead us? Our research found that Preference for harmony is closely associated with familiarity, not just a preference for good gestalt. Preference for harmony may actually reflect our preference for things that are easier to process, and there might be a connection between how sensitive we are to processing is and our aesthetic preference judgments. How can we translate these intriguing findings into tangible benefits of our daily lives? It turns out there are numerous opportunities to enhance our lives with this knowledge. Having a deeper understanding of how people make aesthetic judgments across artistic domains is crucial for advancing the accuracy of artistic taste predictions. These distinctive preference for harmony profiles have the potential to elevate our engagement with art in multiple fields, such as online retail, digital art and music platforms, and art institutions. Imagine a future where art museums and galleries have evolved, curating not just exhibits, but creating a truly personalized and immersive experience for each visitor. Ensuring every art piece we encounter resonate with our unique artistic inclinations. This transformation can simply begin from sharing your musical preferences. Perhaps by syncing your favorite Spotify playlist when you book your tickets or by selecting the musical genres or artists you like. As you step into the museum, you're greeted by a digital guide, already in tune with your preference for harmony profiles and artistic leanings. If you're someone with higher preference for harmony, you might be guided to paintings and sculptures using harmonious colors, 
symmetrical compositions, or familiar patterns. If you're someone with lower preference for harmony, your journey might guide you to art that challenges norms. Perhaps artworks using discordant colors, complicated structures, or unconventional themes. This is no longer just a museum visit. It's an odyssey of self-discovery through the lens of art and personality. As our day unfolds with algorithms curating each facet of our lives, from musical playlists to movie recommendations, the fusion of artificial intelligence and human aesthetics is opening up exciting possibilities. It's not just about numbers and data. It's our personality, our individuality, and our unique perception of beauty that are at the core of crafting individualized art recommendations. Just as my day starts with the perfect musical playlist and ends with an exclusive movie recommendation. We are moving into a future where our interaction with art in all its captivating forms becomes profoundly personal and exceptionally enriching. <laughs>